Oh, blessings. I'm so glad you tuned in. I got a, a short message I want to share with you. It's kind of an um, insight that I've been sharing on Sundays, my webinar online that I call The Inner Versity. And I'm going to be decreasing meeting every single Sunday as I have been for the past four years. The attendance has dropped off because I started this right after the pandemic, when the pandemic started. And of course, we had a room full. And so now that, you know, we're flatlining, the pandemic is pretty much over. More people have returned to their lives. And so I decided I'm just going to start doing the university maybe just once or twice a month. But I'll also be sharing online. Um some of the messages that I've been sharing. And this is one that was so powerful. Um, it's what I shared on how to deal with a crisis, how to deal with trauma, how to deal with a shift that has happened in your life, how to deal with a crisis, how to deal with a heartache, how to deal with disappointment. See, we're emotional beings and some people get all in their feelings and they don't know how to think things through because they're living in their feelings. Uh, Solomon said, um, Guard your heart, because your heart is where all your feelings are, your emotions. So we interchange the word emotions and feelings. And so I found that there's several different ways that people feel when they're going through a storm, when they are just overwhelmed with stress, with, you know, decisions they've got to make, with loss, with grief, with disappointment, betrayal. And so here are some of the responses. And I want to see if you could figure out which one you do. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I discovered ten responses that I see people um, exhibit when they're going through stress. And the first, and they all start with the letter F. That's the, that's the letter for the day. The first one is some people just fake it. Yep, they just become numb. They just smile all the time. You ask them how they do. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm blessed. They're not feeling anything. They shut it all down. They're not feeling nothing. And they can just, you wouldn't even know the warfare they're in because they're covering it up so well. They're faking it so well. And sometimes that works, but we all need a safe place to really speak the truth. We all need a safe place where we can say, look, this is what's going on. I need some support. I need some solutions. I need um, <laughs> some prayers. I need favor. I need hope. So faking it is not something we want to pull out of our toolbox all the time. Yeah, everybody doesn't need to know what's going on with your life. So faking it all the time is not a healthy choice. The next one is freeze. Some people just freeze. They're frozen. They're in shock. They are just, it's like the deer caught in the headlights and they just stop. They can't think. They can't function. You know, they get bad news and they're just, at a loss for words. They, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They're just frozen. Been there. Yeah. Another thing people do is they just get into a fight mode. They're going to hurt somebody. They want to beat somebody up. Yeah, they, they're fighting. Fighting mad. Like, how dare? How could this happen to me? I want to hurt somebody. And if they're not hurting somebody externally, then they want to hurt themselves. They're in a fight mode. They're just beating themselves up. Uh, talking about themselves or talking about other people or, you know, trying to mad at God. Like, how could this happen? I'm mad. This is, they're full of anger. They're fuming with anger. And, you know, anger is just one letter short of danger. And then some people go into flight. They just run. I can't be here. I can't take this. I don't, have, I don't want to be involved. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So let me just leave. Let me just go. You know, sometimes people leave their families or they leave their job or they leave the scene because they don't know what to do. They're in flight. They don't have the tools. They don't have the faith. They don't have the support system. They don't have the resiliency. They don't know what to do. So they just, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. And then there's some people that just learn to forget. They're just like, you know what? I don't remember. I moved on. I let it go. I didn't obsess on it. I just decided that it wasn't a healthy for me thing for me to do is to keep thinking about it. So I'm just letting it go. I'm not gonna, I don't remember. I moved on. I detached. And that's what forgetting is. It's like I detach. I don't want to constantly talk about it. I don't want to constantly bring it up. 
I want to move forward so they forget. You know, a lot of times, you know, our family members bring up things like, I don't remember. <laughs> and I don't know if that's the minds way of protecting us from pain, but some of us just know how to forget and move on. And then some people just freak out. They just like go ballistic. They're like, ah, you can't find them. They don't make any sense. They're irrational. They're freaking out. They're out of control. Um, they're dangerous because they have, they're just freaking out. Uh, and that's how some people respond to, to change, to stress, to a crisis. They just freak out. They want to blame everybody or blame themselves, or they just feel like a victim. They feel violated. They're freaking out. I don't know what to do. And then there's some people that go around fooling themselves. Oh, it'll go away. Oh, they didn't mean it. Oh, I didn't know. And so they fool themselves that they're not responsible for making changes or they fool themselves and think that that person that is disrespecting them or abusing them, they they let them off the hook. They don't hold them responsible. They, they don't understand their worth. So they fool themselves like, maybe I deserve this. Maybe I don't know what to do. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm helpless. Don't fool yourself. You've got so much power within you. Know your worth so that you're not allowing people to fool you and manipulate you. Mm-hmm. And then another thing people do when they're going through stress is they learn to forgive. Most of all, forgive themselves. Like, you know what? I wish I'd made some better choices. I wish I had done something different, but I've got to forgive myself. I've got to take myself off the cross. I got to forgive my parents. They did the best that they could do. I, I got to forgive that friend. I, and it doesn't mean that you are justifying bad behavior or poor choices, but you're forgiving so that you are detaching. You're not attached to the pain. You're not trauma bonding with someone or an experience so much that it becomes your identity. You're moving on. You're, you're, you're forgiving. I, I let it go. I let it go and I let God. I don't know the answer. It's a mystery. I don't understand it. I didn't deserve it. I don't know why it happened. I don't have the answer, but I forgive. I move on. I counsel and coach so many people, I mean, mature people that are still talking about what happened in their childhood because they were so traumatized and they can't let go. They identify with the story of being a victim. They identify with the story of being violated, of being hurt, neglected, treated invisible. And so they haven't learned to forgive and move on. And number nine, there are some people that learn to just go with the flow. And say, you know what? I'm in a season of trusting. I, I'm just going to flow. I'm just, I don't understand it. I'm going to let go. I'm going to find some ease in my life. I'm going to flow. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to flow gently down the stream. I'm going to flow. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, I find myself stressed out and God, like what's happening? I'll put my hand under the sink and I'll let the water just run through my hands and I notice that I can't capture the water. I notice that the water flows and it calms me. Water is very calming. And so, you know, maybe you need to get to the ocean or to the lake or to the river or just someplace where there's some water. Get in the tub, get in the shower, go someplace where there's water and flow. Just flow. The tide goes in and out, in and out. And that motion can calm your spirit. Just go with the flow. It's going to be okay. Trust that everything is going to work out for your good. Just trust God. Flow. Let go of the worry. Flow. I know you don't know all the answers. Flow. Mm -hmm. And the last response that I find people portray and exhibit when they're going through stress is faith. They have faith. They're like, I don't know. I'm trusting God. I'm in a trusting season. I'm trusting the mystery of life. I'm trusting that God loves me. I'm trusting. I'm trusting. <sighs> yeah. It's a great place to be. To be able to just relax and exhale and say, I trust you, Lord. I trust the law. I trust that I'm doing the best that I can. I trust that I'm making better decisions. I trust myself to make good decisions. I trust that I will learn to love and forgive. I trust that I will have discernment. I trust that I will stand 
on my holy ground. I thank you for watching and listening to this lesson today. I will be posting more series like this. And you know what? If you're enjoying it, could you do me a favor? Yeah, could you hit the share button? Could you leave a comment? That would help tremendously. It would mean so much to me if you would do that. Hit the share button, hit the like button, and leave a comment. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be blessed, stay in the light, and do not let the hard days win.